I'm Shadnita, and I manage the mentor engagements at Jobs for Her. This masterclass is being organized by Jobs for Her. With over one month of the nationwide lockdown, corporates are witnessing employees showing signs of stress and mental issues. Many companies have taken measures to mitigate the issue with buddy systems, group therapy, and laughter sessions. Now it becomes vital to keep your team spirits high to ensure that work doesn't suffer. In today's masterclass, we will be discussing some additional measures that companies can take to enable employees to wade through the COVID-19 pandemic crisis. There are many ways to achieve this, like regular sync ups, virtual coffee meetups, etc. Madhumita will bring to the fore many other ways to keep employees motivated while working remotely. Well, I take this opportunity to introduce Madhumita Venkataraman, a HR professional with experience working across corporate and consulting roles. She has worked in areas of business partnering, setting up HR practices, leadership development, talent management, diversity and inclusion, and organization design in large companies, a startup, and a leading consulting organization. She has worked extensively in the space of diversity and inclusion with consulting organizations, corporates, NGOs, and social enterprises to create an impact. Across gender disability, LGBTQA, and generational diversity. Has a certification in gender, sexuality, and disability from CREA, and is certified in American Sign Language. She started and leads a blog called Diversity Diaries, which represents a voice, point of view of, of different minority groups. Featured in the media and has spoken at multiple conferences on her own personal journey and her work in diversity and inclusion. Also headed the diversity and inclusion practice for Hindustan Coca-Cola beverages and led the diversity and inclusion circle for the bottling investments group. And is currently pursuing her passion in the space of mental health by training herself to be a counselor at Parivartan. She is also a founder of Diversity Dialogues, a collective which does some cutting edge work in building inclusive spaces. I request you all to keep yourselves muted and we'll take questions after the session. Over to you, Madhumita. All right, thank you. I hope I'm audible. Yes, you are. Go ahead. All right, great. Yes. Um, all right, Sharnita, thank you. Um, so thank you for this opportunity, uh, Jobs for Her. Um, I've had a few people reaching out to me, Sharnita, saying they're, try they're trying to get in. And they're yes, I think I was introducing you. Yeah, and then, sure. yeah. So I'm going to request you to do that uh, possibly and allow people to come in. Yes. Um, so good morning, everybody. A very, very warm welcome to the session. Um, you know, and it's always wonderful to sort of talk to uh, people associated with jobs for her. Um, so I, um, you know, I, I think Sharnita has done a brilliant job in introducing me. Um, I'd sort of say that I currently am one of the founding members of Diversity Dialogue. Yeah. Um, you know, that's largely what I do. Um, and also, uh, I'm in the, uh, I work in the space of mental health quite extensively. So we start the workshop and, uh, you know, as and when, if you have any questions, please put yourself, uh, put uh, any questions that you have on chat. Um, I'd request each one of you to please, please, please mute because, uh, you know, otherwise there will be a lot of disturbances as we're trying to work this through. Right. Uh, with that, uh, we'll start the session. I'm going to uh, start with a small engagement in the spirit of uh, mental health and well-being. Uh, and this is going to be, um, I'm not able to move the presentation. Okay, one second. It's moving. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So this is going to be about the sign language challenge. Um, uh, just to sort of talk about this a little bit more. Mm. Sign language is a language which is used by persons with speech and hearing impairments, the deaf community, to be able to communicate with the larger world, uh, which is non-signing. Um, so that's 
about sign language there are a lot of different types of sign language like there are as many number of languages uh, so you have american sign language you have brazilian sign language you have indian sign language so i'm going to start with um, the basics of sign language uh, which is going to be to be able to get the alphabets right uh, so what i want each one of you to do and i can't sort of see all of you uh, but i'd um, ask each one of you to do this is to face the um, screen and uh, yes, basically put up your hands um, are you able to see me uh, you will have to move a little yes, yes. now well, i'm able to see again um i don't know what's wrong i need people to see my hand and hmm one so oh, i think you just have to sit in front of the camera yeah but... one minute yeah i one second let me just figure out how to do this now is it better yeah yes okay. but i will still yes yes okay. now it's now, now you can see my hand so basically the focus is on my hand um i'm going to have or spell a to z for you and i want each of you to be able to do this then we'll talk about the challenge part of it but first maybe learn to do this um so this is a all right this is b this is c C is exactly the way it is usually spelled. So I'd request all of you. I'd love to see you, but I can't. So please do this in your own space. This is D. Then you have E. F is fine. Uh, you know, so basically it's F. Then you have G. H. H is like this. All right. i i is your last finger i as simple as that j j all right you have k this is american sign language you could have different sign languages but this is american sign language l is exactly like l all right m is basically like this sorry m is like this so the last finger but one m is here Yes, I can see some of you. So you're doing it right. N. N is the next finger. So between your two, I mean. Oh, okay. Yeah, N is like this. O. O is exactly the way you would actually write O. Okay. So you had K like this. P would be like this. Okay. Q would be down. so you had g like this g was more like a c you put that you invert that and it will be q so sovik you're doing it well i am do hi so um yeah i don't know where i was q r r is like this so r is your fingers crossed s is strong so the way you would show strong that's what s holds for okay T is you saw M N the same way but the first finger so T is like this. U is both your first two fingers joined together so U. V is just V the way we would say victory. W is just putting up the next finger and W. Is that? Madhu, I can't see your finger. I can't see your hand, Madhu. Now. Yeah, W. Is that okay? Yeah. Yes. Yep. X. X is fine. X is just one single first alphabet X. Yes, most of you that I can see are doing it perfectly. Okay. Y is basically you fold all the middle fingers, your last finger, and your thumb is up. So that's why Kushal pointed it out towards the screen. So always, whenever you're doing sign language, you will have to point it out towards the person because they should be able to see you. So it needs to be towards the screen. And Z is the way you'd write Z normally. So that's the way Z would work. So that's all the alphabets. Now we've spoken about those alphabet, uh, all the letters of the alphabet, rather just to be right politically uh, and literally. So this is. sign language that's all the alphabets of the english language which means if i have to tell you 
uh, I need a cab. So if I have to say cab, I can say it say, using this, right? I can spell the alphabet. Now, beyond this, there's, of course, sign language, which works. This is not the beginning and the end of sign language. There are lots of words. So there's also cab, which we'll actually talk about, or thank you, or sorry, or the usual way any language would work. What we want you to do, though, as a part of the sign language challenge, and this is something that Diversity Dialogues is very, very key, interested in, is to, uh, you know, spell your name, learn to spell your name. So I can see Saurabh, I can see Kushal, I can see some very familiar faces. So each one of you learning to spell your name. It's also available on all our social media channels and we'll probably, through Jobs for Her, share a mail with you. So this is not going to take more than 10 minutes of your time. I'd encourage you, one of you to be able to go ahead and do this. Um, and this will be great for us. It's also something that, you know, given we're talking about engagement, given we're talking about mental health, uh, you know, we could do with each of your teams. You could go ahead and do what I just did with each of your teams. It's learning something new, it's exciting, it's opening up a world of communication. So I hope each one of you do try this. Um, moving on, I'm going to spend a minute talking about diversity dialogues. As I realize, a lot of you may not know what and who we are. Um, so we're basically a collective. We started about a few years back um, representing and what's special about us, I think, is one that we represent um, multiple affinity groups. We, we represent the voice of the community by itself. So we have people across different genders, representing the LGBT community, across different age groups, mm -hmm. persons with disability, all of it as a part of the, uh, of the collective itself. Mm -hmm. All of us almost are passionate about DNI. I think it's a non-negotiable that is a part of this collective. And most of us have diverse careers. So some of us are fully into diversity and inclusion. Some of us also juggle mental health, uh, technology, uh, arts, and so on and so forth. So we have a whole lot of people associated with this. Um, we've been clearly, and I'm not saying this, I, I'm sure that most people would agree. We've done some cutting edge work. Uh, like Sharnita said, we are thought leaders in this space. And largely what brings in thought leadership for us is that we've spoken about more spaces of DNI before they were just spoken about at large. For example, we spoke about LGBTQI inclusion from a policy benefit and from an ecosystem perspective way before it was spoken about or way before Section 377 was read down. Um, you know, we've spoken about various use of parenting, which is parenting of uh, persons with disability, queer parenting, single parenting, and what should organizations do in that context, mental health, um, supporting gender affirmation for transgender employees. We formally um, uh, registered. Right. In, uh, we from formally home. registered in. I'd again request all of you to go on mute. Uh, so, we formally registered last year in 2019, and from then we've partnered with many corporate organizations on their inclusion journey. So we do everything right from policy to um, you know practices to uh, ad, uh, to doing a lot of education and sensitization programs um, to developing the overall DNI uh, strategy and being able to run that. So all of the things we pretty much do talent development as well for specifically, um, you know, uh, different diversity segments, uh, except for probably recruitment, because there we have organizations like Jobs for Her, uh, who, who do the job pretty much and we sort of refer people out to them. Uh, and then we've driven a lot of work with community organizations also. Me coming and speaking here is one such example. And, uh, you know, so we've done a lot of work with organizations which work with different communities as well. Uh, we walk the talk on inclusion. We represent the voice of the community that we are uh, part of, which is why even in this session, I would come in and talk about sign language a little bit. We believe no solution fits all. We will customize to your needs. And we definitely, as you can hear, bring passion and expertise to the work we do. Our dream is to see inclusion become a way of life. So if out of the entire group, some of you go ahead and learn a little bit of sign language, do the sign language video for us, we'd be really, really thrilled and happy today. Um, so, so moving on from diversity dialogues, we'd now talk about uh, the topic that we are here for today. Each one of you are here uh, for. And I want to start with saying that What's really different 
um, you know, from a work perspective post the pandemic and, you know, before that, what is really different? One principal difference is that all of us are working from home. And there was an experiment which was uh, conducted by Stanford about a few years back on working from home and the effectiveness of it on the whole. And I want to put out that statistic to all of you to think about that working from home for, during a nine month period, that was the period which was looked at uh, with a few different organizations, actually led to a 13% increase in performance, you know, almost an extra day of output per week plus a 50% drop in employment quit rates. This statistic basically tells us that it's a great idea, therefore, to work from home, right? It tells us that this is a great, uh, you know, thing to do for organizations, uh, for people in general, to consider this as a clear option in many ways. So what is so different? Why does mental health at all come into the picture during the pandemic? I mean, if work from home is so great, why talk about mental health now? So what is really different at this point in time is three things, you know, which I want to put out here, which is different from the normal working from home space, right? One is choice. So now there's no choice. It's not a decision that each of you make, each of us make to say today I'll work from home, tomorrow I'll go to office, I'll schedule my meetings like this, I'll meet colleagues at this time, this time I'll do meetings. It's not that. There's no choice here. Right. So the loss of choice, the loss of freedom, most importantly, to say, OK, fine, I'm going to spend my day like this. I'm going to go out in the evening. I'll hang out with friends. I'll hang out with colleagues. That loss of freedom is the first thing that's really different during this time. And I'd like each one of you to remember that not only for yourself, but also if you're an HR business partner, manager, leader, whichever scope uh, frame you're joining this session in. Uh, you know, to remember that for the people as well. So, you know, so choice is one major difference. The second one, and this is going to be from a mental health angle, is loss of control, which is I don't know when is this going to change. I don't have complete control over my life, right? And that's something that can be difficult for people to come to terms with because usually we run on a routine, on a schedule, you know what's going to happen tomorrow. You're sort of planning for it. But here you don't know when will the lockdown really sort of go away? How will things change? What will the next six months look like? There are people who are losing jobs. Um, there are lots of changes in life circumstances that's happening for a lot of people. So given that control is something one is out of control and that, uh, you know, as a person, as a human being can put somebody into a space of, oh, my God, is this OK? Am I OK? Right. The third one is in terms of loss of competence. So the first two are enough to actually shake somebody up to sort of go ahead and then question, am I competent enough? Can I deliver? Will I be OK? Will my family be OK? Will my organization be OK? Will we continue to sort of deliver on what we already have been, always have been, right? And that loss of competence, that feeling that, oh my God, I don't know, is something that can also be very, very difficult for people to go through. Um, you can look up, I've, I've sort of referenced it out. There's an um, organization called InnerSight. They have a guide on mental health. You can look that up to understand the three concepts a little bit more and how it plays out. But this is how the change is really at this point in time, right? And therefore, I mean, we don't have a study in India at the moment. I do wish there was one. But at this point, this is the study that I could refer to. So there was a study done by Qualtrics of more than 2,000 employees conducted at the end of March and early April of this year in Australia, France, Germany, New Zealand, Singapore, the US and the UK. Um, so a large demographic was covered. And, you know, what was found is that there are mental health symptoms since COVID-19 outbreak, and these are some of the symptoms, right? So the people are emotionally more exhausted, 53.8%, which is a significant number. There's increased sadness in day-to-day -day life, which is almost 53%. Um, you have people being more irritable, 50%, uh, feeling generally more confused, 42%. Increased insomnia, which is about 38%. Increased anger, 32%. Increased feelings of guilt, you know, 
uh, about 25%. So these were some of the top. I'm sure there could have been more. But there is a lot of emotions, feelings um, associated uh, with this entire pandemic. Um, and, and, you know, if, if you go through the news, it's all the more, uh, right? So there is a lot of people feeling this. So the first thing as leaders, as people, we ought to do is to be able to recognize and say that this is emotionally a difficult time. This is not an easy time for everybody. Um, and that recognition often leads to one sort of putting it out there, being aware. I'm also training to be a mental health professional. So I will use some of those things to say that if you put it out there, you're recognizing it. That by itself is an important first step. Uh, right. So, so we, uh, you know, these are the reasons why talking about mental health in the context uh, becomes very, very important. Hello. So now I'm going to request all of you to go to menti.com um, and uh, use the code. One second, let me try and present this. So the code is 765081. If each one of you, and we'll play a quick, or I don't know if it's a quiz, it's more like just getting to understand how are each one of you feeling today. So... Madhu, we have to do it now? You have to do it now, yes. So, uh, menti.com 765081. It shouldn't take more than like a few minutes for you to do this. So, please do it for me, each one of you. The question is, how are you feeling today? So I want you to write, how are you feeling today? And there is a feeling wheel to be able to assist you uh, so that, you know, there is also, I mean, very often I've heard or, you know, that feelings are usually, I'm feeling good, I'm feeling bad, but feelings don't end there. There are lots of other forms of feelings. You could be feeling fearful. You could be feeling angry. You could be feeling happy. You could be feeling surprised. You could be feeling sad, frustrated, aggressive, you know, rejected insecure, anxious, scared, bored. So there are a number of different feelings that one could have, nervous, um, you know, so there are lots of feelings and that's why I put out the feeling wheel there. Has nobody logged in? Uh, I have Madhu? logged in. I have logged in, Madhu. Madhu, is it I important to go in. through the feeling wheel or can we just, uh, because I've, I'm done typing long ago. Yeah, yeah, please go ahead. If you've done typing long ago, there's no yeah. need for you to go through the feelings wheel. Uh, the reason I put the wheel out there is for some of us to be able to identify feelings becomes a little like uh, difficult. So, you know, having words associated with it helps. Uh, there's, you know, so feel free to use the wheel. Feel free to I not can't see the wheel. wheel. It's absolutely... I can't see the wheel. You can't see the wheel? Okay, let me find. Uh, it's okay, I'll just, I'll just put the words. Yeah. I also have the wheel in the presentation somewhere, so I can show it to you there. Now I'm assuming most of you can see the wheel. Yes, thank you. Sure. We done, Madhu. All right. Now, where did this go? Wait, yes. So if so many of you filled it up, I don't know why am I not able to. I have also done it. Why are the results not showing up? Hmm. I don't know why I can't see the results. Okay. It's showing for you as a word cloud. I don't know why it's not showing up for me. So, okay, I don't know what's wrong with my system. Okay, 
if it's showing up for you uh, i can see prabha sort of typing in there if it's showing up for you feel free to unmute and call out some of the feelings that you can see we're in this together so doesn't have to be only me calling things out so i'm i'm calling out the biggest ones are anxious frustrated optimistic happy good and tired all right so anxious frustrated optimistic happy uh, good and tired um, it's it's good to know there are so many people who put that out there now i'd ask you all to actually think about and uh, you know why you're feeling the way you are what's making you anxious what's making you happy what's making you feel a little um, you know uh, tired and uh, and actually even put that down um and that's one of the ways of processing feelings um so if you're doing this with your team i hope you have better technology than what i am currently working with but you know so if you're doing this with your team do exactly pretty much the same thing where you have every meeting you start off with saying how are people feeling uh, if you have a small team the nicer way to do this i mean we have a lot of people who joined in today so i'm not doing that is to actually share why they are feeling the way they are take a minute to be able to do that so setting first 5 10 minutes of the meeting to be able to talk about some of these things specifically if there is somebody in the team who's going through a certain loss um you know if there is some loss in the family that they've gone through i know that in the last two days there have been some uh bollywood actors who passed away and it could be something that could be uh you know alarming or difficult for people so so that is something that one can uh, look to process um right um so so you know starting the meeting uh spending the first 5 minutes at this point in time uh is very important instead of just saying i hope everybody is doing well and let's just start off with what the agenda for the day is uh if you could do something around also uh for example doing the sign language challenge doing something fun for the day it would really help uh you know to get the point across to people uh and to help them express themselves because that's what it's about um so coming back now now that we've spoken about feelings and how that works and uh, we will take any questions that you have towards the end how does this entire piece this piece of saying people are more emotionally exhausted some of you said we are sad we are anxious how does this really impact things why is it important to talk about it again is because there is difficulty in concentrating it takes longer to do a task there is difficulty reasoning thinking or deciding uh, putting off challenging work is something that commonly sort of happens difficulty juggling tasks or responsibility so all of these things are the reason why again it impacts so it does impact productivity and therefore it's important to be cognizant of mental health uh, when one is sort of uh, looking at this subject what can organizations do so i'm going to talk about some things that organizations can do in this space uh, the first one is to connect communicate and reflect right so i know a lot of organizations have stand ups um you know having probably a weekly connect so i'd put it in three levels the organization should connect on a weekly basis at least once um to be able to talk about how the business is doing what is happening what are some of the reflections if there are um you know critical aspects that need to be spoken about this needs to be from the leadership um regularly on a weekly basis it's useful to be able to do this um uh, and um, what it also opens up is it opens up channels in terms of people being able to reach out so this is from the senior leadership in the organization it's a good idea to have a mechanism a rhythm a practice uh, say monday morning is is sort of what i've seen most organizations sort of do also spend time reflecting on what's going well where is the business what's not going well and all of that becomes very very important the second one which is equally important is defining ways of work and when i mean ways of work uh, you know what you're really talking about is how would the day run for people right like i said earlier there is a certain feeling of loss of control there's a certain feeling of loss of choice 
So therefore, how are you going to define ways of work which are ensuring flexibility at the same time you're sort of defining very clearly that, you know, these are the working hours for the day. This is when people will log in. This is when people will log out. There should be a break for about half an hour, one hour for lunch, you know, tea, coffee breaks, whatever. So what is the schedule going to be? Overwork, uh, sorry, work after certain number of hours is not allowed. You know, all of those things, I think, is very, very important to sort of call out, define during these times. If you have a policy, there is nothing like it because the policy could also uh, dwell upon things like what does leave mean at this point in time? Will leave be the same for everyone? Uh, you know, so those things become very, very important. Uh, again, you know, uh, Sharnita, if there's a way to centrally mute, uh, I don't know if there is a possibility to be able to do that because I don't know if I will also get muted. But if there is a way, maybe you want to check that. Uh, I'm so coming doing with, that, muting people. Okay. Um, there is a way of centrally muting people and Madhu, you can just unmute yourself then. Okay. Okay. So I will continue. So defining ways of work, work becomes very, very important. The third one, which I'd like to talk about is mental health care. Uh, so if your organizations do not have a employee assistance program, I would think it's a good time to at least get a few counselors, arrange for helplines, numbers where people can call in. Uh, so that's one clear thing to be done. The second uh, piece is, of course, in case in your team, there is somebody who's going through grief, loss, there's a team member who's going through something and, you know, there's been, uh, then having group therapy sessions is helpful. Uh, you will need a therapist to be able to run the session for you and to be able to contain people, but to be able to do that becomes important. Uh, the third piece, which I have, of course, uh, seen work, uh, is to develop a set of people like in the case of physical safety, very often you have champions, EHS champions and so on, to actually develop mental health champions, make them go through an online session on what it means to be a peer supporter. It may be a one, one and a half hour session, but build that group within the organization so that people can also reach out to people who can give them any form of support, uh, you know, if, if required. At an individual level, at a manager level, we will come into what does this translate into. But at this point, from an organization standpoint, it's important to ensure any form of peer support or EAP services are available. Right. Um, the last bit of it, I think, or one of the last bits of it is, of course, to have fun. Uh, so like the sign language challenge is one form of having fun. I know that there are organizations which are getting together and jamming and doing music. Um, online. Uh, what is different about this time is specifically that many of us are living with many of us, not all of us are having family members around us. So even having every person in the team actually introduce their family to you in different points. So the important thing to remember with fun resources and events and all of these things is not to do it like once in a week and then to not do anything for the rest of the week. But Maybe, you know, uh, to spend like the first five minutes of, 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 of a meeting, uh, you know, getting a family member in and just talking to them and then moving on with the meeting. And when I mean, I don't mean that, you know, in a one hour meeting, you sort of keep time for sign language followed by feelings followed by this. No, I mean, every day you do a different thing. Uh, so that's also something that's interesting. Doodling. Uh, you know, doing any form of doodling, Mandela, having people do that and share that back with you. Uh, playing online games is something which uh, can be done. Uh, having a brain teaser, a simple brain teaser at the end, uh, start uh, of a session is a great way. Compliment circle. So one thing that's uh, sort of very important, uh, especially for people, uh, you know, who are with corporates is you are, you are, um, if I could use the word privilege, I would say that, you know, you could be one of the people who are privileged to have a job, to have that support system with you. So to be able to talk about what are you grateful for during this time is an excellent way to break anxiety, is an excellent way to sort of move away from, from that space. So using a, a compliment circle kind of format where, you know, you're having each person appreciate the other for something that they're doing. Uh, making sure as a, uh, you know, that... Uh, 
there are knowledge sharing sessions that are happening. I mean, sign language, for example, and I'm bringing that back only because we've done it is, is a form of knowledge sharing. It's something I know I can share with you. So the same way in each of your teams, it could be a recipe. It could be something else. What can you share? Uh, creating a story together. Again, something that can be done online and is something that is fun. Uh, you know, when my recommendation to you would be not to actually keep um, events as a very separate thing, like every Friday, every whatever, someday we'll do events and the rest of the week, it'll all be about meetings, but to merge it a little bit at this point in time. Uh, and if you have a one hour meeting, keeping the first 10 minutes for some kind of fun, maybe a better way to do it because people could be going through some level of anxiety, nervousness, anxiousness on a daily basis. So doing something, you know, just once in a while is just fun, but it doesn't add value. This may be a better way in my experience of doing the whole thing. The last bit which I talk about is volunteering. I think, um, you know, during this time, all of us are reading the news and many of us do wonder what is the contribution that we are making uh, to this entire space, right? So if you want, you know, to organize volunteering sessions, uh, organize, for example, reading for the blind um, uh, sessions, and there are organizations which are doing that or uh, getting care mongers in India, uh, some of these other groups which are seeming to do a lot of work in supporting people, to have an open volunteering sign up network would be very helpful. Um, you know, what is important when you talk about volunteering is not to mandate it. Uh, you know, what needs to not happen is to say everybody has to volunteer like this because some people would be going through a certain space where they just want to stay away from this whole thing and don't want to get into supporting or volunteering at this point in time and to be able to respect that and acknowledge that and say that that's also fine. Um, is something that's very important on volunteering. So see, these are some of the broad organization level ideas. I think the most important thing is to communicate. Uh, you know, you don't want including people who are on long leaves, including people who are on, say, sabbaticals, who are, um, you know, on uh, uh, maternity it's important to keep some channel, some form of communication going on. How is the business looking? Where is the job? How is performance looking of the company? What does individual performance look like? When will career planning happen? When will compensation happen? These cycles are going to go for a change, I'm assuming. So, or goal setting for the coming year. How does all of that look at this point in time is something that is important to talk about. Um, so... This is, is what I have as far as what organizations can do. Now, as individuals, as managers, as leaders, as people, what can one do? And if each of you are HR professionals or many of you who've joined in are HR professionals, you could actually take this back, train your managers to be able to do some of these things. Um, you know, so that's where this is coming from, right? Um, so the first is, and I think there's no... Um, sort of escaping from it is to care and act personally at this point in time. And when I mean caring and acting personally, what does that really mean? Um, you know, it, it means that there is awareness and I'm going to start with the last point, but that's for a reason. You, ha you are aware of each of your team members and their realities. Um, so hopefully you've had those conversations before and you know your teams well, but in case you don't, or if there's a new team member, to make sure you know their life circumstances, you know that are they single, alone, uh, you know, they have people with them, who's the family, are they, are they responsible for some kind of elder care, child care, um, are they going through uh, any form of domestic violence um, at this point in time. It's important to have that awareness about each of your team members, and therefore one-on-one -on -one connect at least once a week becomes important. Uh, the next one is offering flexibility. So while you maintain a rhythm and a routine and all of that, but also to be able to offer flexibility and this pretty much organizations are nowadays doing even generally, but to be able to offer that to people because sometimes sitting in front of the laptop the whole day becomes a very difficult proposition. So how do you sort of offer that to people becomes important to look at. Uh, maintaining a routine. 
uh, so everybody logs in at 9:30 and to make some of these decisions mutually not completely from in 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 a unidirectional manner to get that pulse of the team as to are people more comfortable working 10 to 7 you know what timings work for people and so on so that's uh, something that uh, is important uh, to look at resources um very very important i think uh, if there are people in the team who don't have resources to their, do their work you know internet connections laptops uh, not available uh, how do you enable that as a manager how do you make sure you know you're more supportive than usual in getting that done because usually when there's a physical workspace just walk up to the it team talk to them and it will get done here to be able to manage that and then if somebody is not being able to be productive how are you going to look at that in terms of performance in terms of all of those things i think it's important to keep that it's also important to communicate that so for example if you feel like somebody doesn't have a laptop for two days because it's crashed or they can't be support whatever the situation is to be able to tell the employee that hey we're here we we work this out together to be able to tell that to the team member and say don't worry i mean and all of that but if it is something which is important and there are alternate ways in which you want to work it through then to be able to communicate that so keeping that connection on here is very important uh, fun we've spoken about um and therefore for me more than the organization doing things for fun it's actually each manager or each team for themselves which are actually doing things for fun uh, so also in in your one on one to check you know what does fun really mean for that, that person and maybe plan something in a group also accordingly instead of just making it about what you think fun is um and for all you know there could be people who are just like we don't want to do anything any of these things we just want to sort of chill with family after the meetings uh, get over for the day and which is also fine right so important to be aware about these things that's that's the point i would make um talk openly about like very very openly about your own vulnerability i think if you're expecting others to put down their feelings there to talk about their vulnerability it's okay for you to say i am also concerned i am also thinking i am also reflecting i am also this is too much this is new for me uh, you know to talk a little bit about how things are for you at home uh, becomes very important um, so that's important because otherwise um, you know you're not going to be sort of normalizing um, you know things so to be able to make it normal it is important that you talk about your own vulnerability uh, business updates like i said it's okay for the uh, organization to connect once a week and then make those notes i mean and then sort of share that but then at an individual level if this is what it means for the organization what does it really mean for the team what are some of the important updates uh, from a team perspective uh, is important to talk about the last one and this i want to tell you is something that i have heard uh repeatedly coming in to me uh, as somebody who also um, sort of is a peer support person which is this concern over career role performance uh, you know where am i going how is it going so as a manager it's your responsibility to connect on this even if it means that you're not sure even if it means that you're not sure about it it's okay for you to say that but to say that listen you know uh we're trying our best we're looking at how we can fit in you into another role if that be the case how will performance be evaluated we'll find out in due time but not to sort of ignore this and not touch upon it at all uh would be would be not right because people are wanting to know what's going to happen with them and rightly so how do you um uh, madhu i have you? a question no i would uh, want uh, questions in the end uh, for everybody um okay. all right so you know so uh, the next one is to regularly keep checking in beyond the how are you i think we have a tendency to stick to how are you which is why i decided to sort of put some of these things up which is for example what has been hardest for you this week what have you been reading or listening to lately and you could do this in group you could do this individually especially the what have you been reading or listening to lately can be done in a group what do you wish uh, you did more of today what has been some of the things that have been worrying you to you know some of these questions to be able to bring up conversations and when the person sharing to just actually listen i think uh, you know uh, my recommendation would not be to start advising 
to sort of start saying what the person should do but just to actually listen and say that yeah i acknowledge it i hear you uh, you know let's try and work this out this way maybe we could do this or what suggestions do you have in order to change some of these things you know so but to be able to have this conversation becomes uh, very very important so to regularly keep checking in is important you could use tools like the feeling wheel you could get this online as well i mean just type for feeling wheel and you pretty much will get that to do something like a ca- coping calendar i don't like want to call it coping calendar but a calendar of sorts where you're actually putting a calendar together for the entire team and saying every day we'll do this one fun activity this one ex- you know fun thing so for example write down 10 things you feel grateful for in a, in life and why uh you know notice five things that are beautiful in the world around you so and then to have a conversation around it and in the interest of time you could use tools like mentimeter or you know slido or whatsoever to be able to do that take 5 minutes to sit still and breathe repeat regularly you know so just sharing of experiences could happen this way uh this is a time where most people are alone and what we're basically saying is how do you sort of address that concern that fear that fear of you know are there people with me uh so this is one way on you know of doing that so you could check this out online i'm now going to talk about something a little bit more serious um you know which is in case you see signs of distress uh in the teams Uh, or in a certain set of people and what the signs of distress really mean for example one is chronic fatigue i you have a team member who tells you i just don't feel like getting up i just don't feel like on a regular basis so that is something that one should sort of look at uh, the second is um, absenteeism uh, or social isolation so you know any fun activity you organize any meeting you organize this person's always not there uh, you know and is always complaining of i'm not well or you know something like that or again it could be linked to chronic fatigue poor self care if there are people who are not looking after themselves well um you know you see somebody who's shabby always on the call and when i mean shabby i don't mean somebody wearing casual clothes uh, or things like that uh but but just generally not you know not combed your hair on a regular basis looking a certain when if that's the natural personality of the person it's a different story but if they're doing that specifically during this time something to look out for um not slept for days um mood swings you suddenly give work to the person person's irritated um you know is is sort of um displaying more than the usual nervousness more than the usual anxiety uh loss of interest and all of it comes from a space of loss of interest um and if there are thoughts of suicide or self harm saying i don't know if i want to survive this i don't know what will happen to me what you know some some of those statements that one would commonly hear these are signs of distress so during this time what do you really do you one set up a one on one meeting with the person ask them how are they doing states that you're noticing some of these things uh it's concerning you hope they're fine tell them acknowledge if they open up hear them out say that you know i'm there for you and um, and uh, you know you can reach out to me at any point in time seek their permission in case you want to inform uh, hr or you want to inform a uh, you know um family member in case you're planning to go there and do that please 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 uh, seek uh you know their permission give them the counselors uh, contact number other resources um you know if if required again you know if they have friends within the uh, team to ask them to actually speak to some of them figure out if you want to you know have a small group which can contact each other to check how this person is doing specifically on the last point if there are very clear signs of suicide or self harm you do want to have a way of checking in on the person on a regular basis and you don't want to be the only one doing that as a manager as an hr person or whichever other capacity you want other people to also because for the person it could be why can't this person leave me alone right so doing some of these things uh, and the session is not a session focused on how do you offer support uh, to a person uh, but the most important thing is one not to get scared yourself two to be able to hold yourself and offer a space to the person 
um, to be able to talk and for you to be able to listen. And three, to have resources readily available with you. If required, you can refer the person out, tell the person that these are the resources you have. Uh, you know, all of those things become very important. So these are some signs of distress to also watch out for. So are you equipped? Uh, and I'm going to take two um, separate Circumstances. One is, of course, uh, NIMHANS, and this is a NIMHANS uh, helpline that is there. There are lots of helplines. There's one run by Parivartan, uh, there's one by iCall. And most of these helplines are running full time and offering a lot more support than they would usually. So even if you're in an organization where you don't have counseling support, EAP support readily available for you, keeping these numbers handy with you become important. Um, the other thing that I talk about is there is a lot of people going through domestic violence. This talks about women, but you know, you would have people who say from the LGBT community who are, uh, you know, out to their family and the family is not support. They're going through some kind of uh, difficulty at home. So for people, we assume everybody is safe at home. That may not actually be the case. So if somebody tells you that I'm going through this, what is the kind of support that you can offer? Again, asking them if they should tell HR, if you're comfortable for you to check the HR and come back with the kind of support that can be offered, keeping these helplines, these numbers ready with you, whether it is Bembala. So I volunteer myself for Bembala. There's Vimochna, there's uh, Vanita Sahayawani, which of course is absolute immediate rescue, crisis prevention, police assistance. Uh, you know, so each of these uh, are available um, and uh, is something that you can definitely uh, reach out to if there is support needed. Uh, but most importantly, and that's why it becomes important to be aware of who the team is, like who in your team is going through what, what has been typically the circumstances in the team. Uh, you know, it's important to have that understanding and that knowledge so that if somebody comes to you, you're sort of aware, you know where to support, you also know where to draw the line. Um, so that's uh, important. Right. The most important thing when you're an HR person or a leader or a manager is that you yourself are the instrument of change, right? You're playing a very active role. Like we spoke about feelings, we spoke about engagement, we spoke about a number of different things. So looking after yourself, in other words, uh, is very, very important. So ensuring the same routine, the same schedule, ensuring you are having fun, you're doing other things, you're engaging with family, you are sort of taking good care of yourself is very important for you to be able to enable any of the other things that you're going to be having to do as a part of your job. So therefore, my recommendation, I am not deep diving into this at this point. Um, you know, given the conversation was largely about what organizations can do, but to be able to look up some resources um, like I said there is one which in a site has published about mental health and well-being during uh, COVID-19 and that one talks extensively about what you can do something that I've started doing quite regularly is actually two things one is I've started meditating fairly regularly almost every day um, you know so that's uh, one thing that I've which has helped me keep myself a little less anxious, uh, especially I'm somebody who gets restless quite easily. So, you know, I know that and therefore I've tried to sort of work my way through it. So that's something that I've done. The second one is actually I write every day um, that three things that I'm grateful for. Um, and I've done that now for about 25 days and I can tell you that it does make a difference. So doing those kind of things for you, it could be something totally different. It could be, you know, um, exercise or whatever else that works for you. But to do something for yourself in the day, it could be five minutes or 10 minutes. Please take that time out because if you're in these kind of roles where you're supporting other people in some way or the other, it's important that you take care of yourself. Um, I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about post the lockdown as well uh, because uh, in these times we're also uncertain about where things are going to go and the news seems to be saying new things every day. So um, post the lockdown, one is to definitely open up in a phased manner. 
So even if you're a team manager, an organization to look at how are you going to break it up uh, three days a week working for a certain population, three other days for a certain other population. And in those spaces, then how will things work? You know, when you have half the people in office, half the people not in office, how are you going to space that out? How is that going to work? How is leave going to work during that time? How are many other things going to work is important, which brings me to the second point, which is issuing guidelines for work. Therefore, um, you know, right from every uh, single HR process in the company to be able to talk about how will the company go ahead and work. And I know that some organizations have declared work from home unendingly and, you know, till till end of the year and so on. But I'm still saying it's important to think through this aspect. Uh, are you going to, for example, offer transport given the current situation? Are you going to bring in that? What is going to happen to childcare facility during this time? I mean, maybe it's not operational, but how are you going to open that up and allow people to get their children? How will all of those things sort of get addressed is important to talk about. Mm, the third one is very important. How are you going to address stigma? So if there is somebody in the team, in the organization, who's, uh, uh, you know, somebody who's affected by COVID, uh, what are you going to, uh, how are you going to ensure that that person is not sort of stigmatized? Uh, because, you know, it's, it, it's happening. I mean, uh, you know, already, and there is a certain fear. How are you going to address that? If that person is in your team, what are some of the things that you're going to be then speaking about? If there are losses in the organization, uh, bereavement um, of any nature, some team member who's lost their life, lost their dear ones to this or otherwise, how are you going to process that? How are you going to look at farewells? For example, people leaving the company who already left the company during this time, are you going to call them back, have a small farewell, do the farewell online? What are you going to do? Uh, you know, because people will look for what the organization's take is, how connected are they wanting to be during these things. Uh, continuing the dialogue. Um, you know, don't assume, don't go into this that now it's over. Now we're just like back to normal. Continuing the dialogue, the all the things that we spoke about, including anxiousness, including the stress will come back. In fact, it's expected to go up. Um, there's something called post-traumatic stress disorder, which typically happens after the event is over. So, you know, so there could be signs of that. So to be able to continue that dialogue becomes very important. And if you're an organization which is not considered mental health so far, to be able to consider that becomes very, very important as well. Uh, because this is a space which, you know, is going to need some immediate attention. Uh, maybe I am a mental health uh, professional in the making and I have little more exposure to the space and maybe that's why I'm saying this. But from whatever I've read, seen, the space is going to need its attention and therefore to be able to ensure that. Um, even things like job losses, I mean, people having to leave their jobs, uh, you know, when I mentioned loss, I didn't sort of go uh, deep dive into that. It's important to ensure they get a good farewell. There is enough conversation there. The fear of the existing employees is addressed. They're allowed to connect with this person and have a conversation. So making sure don't just do it, you know, one very quickly, just like that. So those become some of the most important uh, things to look at. Um, so that's, um, that's about uh, what, what I wanted to share with you. I'd love to open it up for a few questions. Uh, I know we, are a, we have about a few minutes, but feel free to sort of either put the question on chat or, you know, whichever way it would work for you. Madhu, hello. Hi. Hi, uh, listen, so uh, in that, uh, in one slide you have said that, uh, mentioned that we have to do, deal with people who have uh, their individual queries about job and career and choices, right? Yeah. So this is not from my organization, but I have a uh, few people have reached out to me and they're from our community. So, so mm -hmm. my question is how to deal with them in that, uh, in this current situation, knowing that recession has hit uh, every industry's in a big margin right now. So in what way I can deal with their questions and help them? So, um, you know, we'd have to get a little bit more uh, into specifically what are they asking? What are they seeking for? But in general, if people are seeking for job opportunities, and that's something I have got a lot coming my way also, uh, is A, to be able to refer them to organizations which are actively in, so again, having a certain set of resources. For example, 
uh, you know, there are a number of portals, Jobs for Her being one of them. Um, you know, for example, then you have, I, I know that there are multiple portals across different communities which support in people getting jobs. So to be able to refer them to that, that's one. The second uh, piece of it, uh, usually, and this is my experience, is that there comes a certain set of anxiety with whether I will get a job, with how will this whole thing be, and all of that. There, the best thing that one can actually do is just to offer support in terms of listening the person out and saying that, listen, you know, uh, things will get better. This year is bad. How else can we support you? Can you look at alternate careers? Can do you have something else that you'd like to do? Exploring all of that, having a little bit of a career conversation would be something that is helpful. Um, the third um, piece is, of course, uh, then to constantly check in with the person. So that's important because sometimes we end up having that one conversation and then ending it there. Uh, you know, and I'm speaking for a larger audience, not just for any individual. So, you know, so to be able to ensure that you are sort of connecting with them on a regular basis, including sort of guiding them on how to, do you approach this conversation with your manager? If there's a fear of losing a job versus actually losing a job, how do you have that conversation with your manager, with the HR person to say, hey, listen, I'm a little concerned. How does the job scenario look? Am I secure? Does this look difficult? So that you get some kind of an answer. So I hope that answers, um, you know, at this point. Any other questions? Hi, I have so a question. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, did you ask? Go me? ahead. Go ahead. No, 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 go yeah. ahead. Okay. Okay. Uh, hi, my name is Nikita, and I work for a company called Full Creative. Yeah. So my question is, um, as you said, we do conduct engagement activities to ensure that people feel connected um, virtually, etc. But um, what I noticed was that there are certain um, leaders in the sense, you know, team leads who, um, as we are vigorously, you know, pushing our products to the market, they think it is it is not that important to participate in these activities and to work harder as in, you know, uh, and even when I try to have a dialogue as in when I try to explain why we do these activities, they just said, oh, no, it, it's we're not interested. So how do we deal with people like that? You know, it's an interesting question, Nikita, and uh, thank you for asking that. Um, mostly, I have been on the other side in the sense that I've been mostly an HR professional in an organization, uh, you know, to understand that sometimes you're looking at the business, you're looking at the scenario as a leader and saying that, listen, I don't have time for this, uh, right? So even in your offering, and which is why I went back to state that, I think in your offerings, I hope there are offerings which are quick and easy to do, uh, you know, which are 10 minute exercises, which are five minute exercises, which are not like this one hour I'll have to dedicate to just having fun because businesses are sort of going through their own phase for them to be able to do that completely. To offer uh, definitely both, um, you know, uh, to definitely offer that a lot more uh, becomes uh, sort of important. Uh, I think that's one. The second, so the way to broach it is to say, listen, this is going to take five minutes of your team's time. The second is to use some statistics. I'm sure today in the call, there could be people who may have joined in saying, I don't know why is mental health so important? Mm -hmm. You know, why are we having to talk about this? So some of the statistics I think I used helps. So that is, for example, something that one could, uh, you know, end up uh, sort of doing. Um, uh, so those those would be like the two quick suggestions that I would have, which is also easy to do. Um, and the third is, of course, for HR people to train their managers. And that's when I think the organization comes in, that you have the organization sort of insisting on certain ground rules and saying you need to have fun months in a while. You can't sort of run this like a uh, let's just keep doing calls and meetings and all of that. But let's space those things out becomes important. Um, I have a um, question online, which I'm going to take uh, and other people can share in their ideas also. Work from home is great, but we're getting tired of uh, seeing the inside of the house. How do we address that? Um, so, <laughs> so I don't have a great answer to this, I have to admit, because we are in the midst of a lockdown and it is important for us to stay within the house. Um, but if you find um, ways of one, you know, is to keep, changing the way the house looks a little bit. So I, for example, have made it a habit to 
change the way my table my chair the spaces around me look every day uh, you know a little bit like again uh, it may be i put up a picture of mine from childhood one day in front of me uh, you know usually the parents pictures are around or the family members but to change that maybe bring in a plant if i have one uh, get a few things from the dining room or whatever to change the way the space looks helps uh because uh, and i don't mean like i'm not saying you need to clean the whole house change the furniture and where it is spaced and all of that but to change what you're seeing every day helps so if you're able to inculcate even your team to do that i mean one uh, suggestion which uh, you know somebody gave me was you know to put up pictures like in office spaces when you are physically there you put up pictures of your family uh there right to reverse that and put up pictures or things from the office here so that you still feel that connection uh to some extent would be a helpful thing to do so i don't have like a perfect answer some people are lucky to have spaces in and around where they have a small garden some level of greenery uh but that's not for everybody if that's available please leave it we have one more question from tony I, christopher yes. so um you know so this session by you so uh, the first slide the stanford uh, you know that slide just once if you can just show that one i really like that uh, uh, that line you know that uh, yeah it's you could find this online as well so yeah but working from home yeah so i put it up you can have a look at it does that work and thank you i just wanted to read it once more thank you sure, so much sure 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 um all right so you know this session is very insightful how do i pass on this information to my manager uh, or hr community can we have uh, another session on the same topic uh, tony you know you could write into team at diversitydialogues.com uh, dot in sorry and we could see how we could take this forward uh, with you uh, definitely uh, there's going to be um, the coding of the session so that's something that i can also be shared and uh, you know that's also something that uh, you can look at uh, is there any other question on the subject um, you know before we close i'm going to give everybody a minute more to answer all right i think um, yes that uh, can you hear me go. yeah With, so thank you uh, to each one of you for joining in i had a great time uh, of course my usual style is to have more time with each one of you talk to you and figure out who you are but given the space that we are in i am glad that we could connect as much as we could uh, take care of yourself all the best and um, mm, thank you jobs for her for this opportunity thank you i'm going to send across the sign language challenge uh, and i'd request uh, jobs for her to pass that on to each of you um, you know so that if any of you are keen on doing that with your teams or by yourself please feel free to do that uh, over to you uh, sharnita thank you madhumita for the exceptionally well organized detailed and insightful masterclass we'll definitely wait for your link on the sign language and i would like to thank all of you for having attended this masterclass thank you again thank you thank you thank you